Hey guys, we're going to be going over DNA replication. Can you think of some problems that cells need to consider when replicating their DNA? Well, cells need to make sure they get exactly two copies, which are identical, and they need to make sure replication happens only once per cell cycle and at the right time. And they need to make sure that everything happens quickly enough that rapidly dividing cells won't be held up while they wait for their DNA to replicate. After all, you've got 3 billion base pairs, so you need to be efficient. Cells also need to minimize mistakes, such as single nucleotide changes or expansions of repeated sequences. They need to fix mistakes that occur as well, and deal with the issue of not losing DNA at the end of chromosomes, which I'll get back to in a minute. So where do we start? Well, DNA replication starts at an area called the origin replication, which is the center part here. And how many of these are there? In prokaryotic chromosomes, there's only one but eukaryotes have a bunch of them, which makes sense since eukaryotes have a lot more DNA to replicate. At this origin of replication, the two strands of DNA separate and form what looks like a bubble, and each end of this bubble is called a replication fork, and as replication progresses, this will expand outward as the new strands of DNA are formed. Okay, so let's look at one of these replication forks. So the blue is a parent DNA, and I'll show the newly synthesized DNA in red. The two strands replicate in slightly different ways, one replicates continuously, and the other replicates in smaller pieces. The one on the left is called the leading strand, and the one on the right is a lagging strand. Now why can't the lagging strand create its daughter strand continuously? Well this has to do with polarity of DNA. Do you know which end of each strand here is a 5' prime and 3' prime end? You might want to pause the video and think about it for a second. So DNA is always synthesized in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction and that's referring to the direction of the strand being synthesized, not the original. So on the leading strand, the new piece of DNA can be synthesized continuously, since the replication fork that it's going towards is at the 3' prime end of the strand being synthesized. And therefore, the origin of replication was at the 5' prime end. However, the lagging strand has to be synthesized in the opposite direction that the replication fork is moving, so as the replication fork progresses, it has to keep starting over. Do you know what each piece of DNA on the lagging strand is called? That would be an Okazaki fragment. Okay, so let's look at some of the enzymes involved. I'll mostly go in chronological order. The first is helicase. So what does helicase do? It unzips the DNA and allows the bubble to expand. A good way to remember this is helicase halves DNA. Helicase disrupts hydrogen bonds between the two strands. It doesn't need to make or break any covalent bonds. Helicases in general belong to a class of DNA enzymes that function not only in DNA replication, but in DNA transcription, translation, and repair. Bloom syndrome is a rare autosomal recessive disease due to a mutated BLM gene. The BLM gene is a member of the protein helicase family, specifically the RecQ helicase group, and it's important in maintaining the stability of the DNA during the replication process. Hyperrecombination occurs, which causes an increase in chromosomal breakage and arrangements, leading to increased mutations. The disease is characterized by sun sensitivity, stunted growth, facial telangiectasias, and higher incidence of malignancies. Now, Bloom syndrome is a lower yield disease to know for your school exams and board exams, so knowing the details and specifics may not be totally necessary, but knowing a mutated BLM gene is due to a mutated helicase function leading to impaired DNA replication is key. Alright, so since helicase is moving along with the replication fork, something is needed to prevent the strands from reannealing to one another, which complementary strands of DNA like to do. Do you know where protein prevents this? This is where a protein called single-stranded binding protein comes into play, and it does just that. It's a protein that recognizes and binds to single-stranded DNA to prevent it from binding to its complementary sequence on the other strand. The last proteins I'll mention that help open up DNA are the topoisomerases. These are proteins that regulate the supercoiling of DNA. Regulation of supercoiling is a vital process in cells, and you can inhibit them in bacteria using the antibiotics fluoroquinolones, and this basically prevents bacteria from being able to divide. Okay, so what enzyme is in charge of synthesizing the leading strand? That would be DNA polymerase 3, which synthesizes the leading strand continuously towards the replication fork, 
which again is in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. One thing to keep straight is the differences between DNA polymerases between prokaryotes and eukaryotes, which is something I always have to keep straight. Prokaryotes have three DNA polymerases, DNA polymerase 1, 2, and 3. These are the ones that you'll most likely be tested on, which makes sense since we can easily use a prokaryote model, such as E. coli, to study their DNA replication process. Eukaryotes, on the other hand, have several DNA polymerases that all end with Greek letters, beta, lambda, sigma, mu, etc. It is super important to understand this distinction because you can easily be asked a question about DNA polymerase 3, for example, and you can quickly rule out any eukaryote options. Okay, so back to DNA replication. So now there's one more thing that needs to be done before we can make the lagging strand, and that's adding RNA primers. There are no DNA polymerases that can initiate DNA synthesis from scratch. They have to build off existing DNA or RNA. So what enzyme can help us here? That would be primase, which can synthesize RNA from scratch. And by that I mean it can add ribonucleotides to their complementary DNA bases and connect them together. Once a primer has been laid down, our friend DNA polymerase 3 can jump in and start adding deoxyribonucleotides to it just like it did for the leading strand. DNA can only be synthesized in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction, so DNA polymerase 3 starts from the RNA primer and builds towards the 3' prime end of the new strand. So as DNA polymerase 3 is making each new strand, it proofreads its work, and if it realizes it made a mistake by adding the wrong nucleotide, it can remove it by using its 3' prime to 5' prime exonuclease activity. This is of course the opposite direction as DNA synthesis, since it's going backwards to remove any mistakes. After the lagging strand has been a continuous stretch of alternating RNA primers and Okazaki fragments, the only thing left is for a different polymerase, which is DNA polymerase 1, to remove the RNA primer using its 5' prime to 3' prime exonuclease activity, and it then fills in the gap with DNA as it goes. Polymerase 1 has the same synthesis and exonuclease functionality and polarity as polymerase 3, but has the added ability to remove RNA primers. So after the lagging strand has become a continuous stretch of alternating RNA primers and Okazagi fragments, the only thing left is for a different polymerase, which is DNA polymerase 1, to remove the RNA primers using its 5' prime to 3' prime exonuclease activity, and we also need to fill in the gap with DNA as it goes. So polymerase 1 has the same synthesis and exonuclease functionality and polarity as polymerase 3, but has the added ability to remove RNA primers. So one last enzyme here, DNA's ligase, will come in and seal the holes between the DNA fragments. Keep in mind, this is between fragments of the same strand of DNA not connecting one strand to its complementary strand in a double helix. The last problem we have is what to do about the ends of the chromosomes. The leading strand has no problem, since it could just synthesize DNA all the way to the end, but the lagging strand is dependent on the RNA primers, and the last RNA primer can't be filled in with DNA once it's been removed, since DNA synthesis would require another primer to build off of. Therefore, a few hundred nucleotides of DNA are lost each time the cell divides. The solution is to use telomerase, which is a ribonucleoprotein that repetitively adds a 6-nucleotide sequence, TTAGGG, or TAG, and it's added to the end of the lagging strand, creating non-coding junk DNA that can be lost without harming the function of the cell. In adults, telomerase is only expressed in cells that need to divide a lot, such as stem cells and other cells in the immune system. Although mutations that cause telomerases to be expressed in other cells are one of the things that are necessary for a neoplastic transformation, since without telomerases, even cancer cells would lose the ability to divide after a while. And that's our video on DNA replication. If you liked the video, don't forget to give a thumbs up.